Rocket Baptist. Um, really excited to be able to, to bring this new message. Um, we finished up with Genesis a couple of weeks ago. Last week we did kind of a buildup of Easter week of the different events. Um, and this week I'm really excited about the lesson that we have. Um, we are in um, the book of Galatians. It's one of Paul's letters that he wrote um, to a group of Christians uh, to kind of correct some issues that were going on. Um, we see in Paul's letters um, that he writes um, to both commend and also correct. So to tell people, hey, good job, I'm thankful for you, and then also to correct some issues that the churches have. Um, in most of his letters, we see a pretty long thanksgiving for, um, for the church at the beginning before he starts correcting because you know, he wants to tell them, hey, good job on this, um, some pro positive reinforcement before he tells them what they need to fix. Um, he doesn't do that in Galatians. He jumps straight into to what's going on. So um, you can kind of see that what's going on is really important to just jump straight in. He sees that it's important to just jump in and, and fix this. Um, and so we are going to be in Galatians 1, um, verses 6 through 10. And so I'm going to read those for us now. Um, I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting him who called you in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Not that there is another one, but there are some who trouble you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one we preach to you, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone is preaching to you a gospel contrary to the one you received, let him be accursed. For am I now seeking the approval of man or of God? Or am I trying to please man? If I were still trying to please man, I would not be a servant of Christ. Okay, so this is the issue. People are being taught a false gospel. So Paul had already come there. He would preached the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news of Jesus Christ. Um, and he left this church that's there. And uh, some people came in after Paul and they went, we don't really like this. Um, and so they started teaching something different. Um, they started saying um, that to be a Christian, you had to be circumcised, which was a Jewish custom. Um, it, it signified that you were part of the Jewish nation. And so you had some Jewish Christians who were teaching, hey, your faith in Jesus isn't enough. You have to have that faith and be circumcised to be saved. And these people in Galatia, these Christians, went, okay. And they started following, uh, following that. And Paul hears about it, and he's going, that's not right. Um, and so what he says here is, uh, look, the gospel is the truth of Christ that I taught you. Um, he says, there is no other gospel. When he says that they're teaching you a, a different gospel, not that there is one, he's saying, look, there's one gospel, and that is that uh, through faith in Jesus and the work that he did on the cross, you are set free. Um, you are now in relationship with God um, as a child of God. And uh, it's all through faith because of what Jesus did. Uh, but these people were coming in and saying, no, what Jesus did isn't enough. Uh, it's also based off part of what you do, part of your, your physical works. And Paul sees how dangerous that is. He comes in and says, that's wrong. Uh, and uh, these false teachers were distorting the gospel. Um, what we see there, um, that word distort, maybe your translation um, says pervert. Um, those are kind of the two things that pop up a lot. Um, it means to reverse or to change to an opposite character. So it would be like um, the hero of a story suddenly turning and becoming the evil person that's trying to kill everybody in, in the movie. Um, and not trying to kill the bad guys, trying to kill innocent people. That would be this sudden reversal. Um, so it's an entire change of character. And so 
when you look at what these people had been taught, what they had accepted in faith through Christ, when they had uh, been taught by Paul, was that our faith in Christ is what saves us. Christ's work on the cross is what saves us. And they had been taught uh, by these other teachers that that's not enough. And they just went, okay. So they basically were content to going back to the thing that they had before Paul shared Jesus with them. They were back to going, all right, I guess I'm going to live under the law because that's what uh, living under the law was like at the time. Um, that's what some of the Jewish people wanted was they went, um, we, um, we get to God by following all the rules. And that's not how you got to God. You got to God by being faithful. Um, and if you follow the rules in faith, awesome. But following the rules wasn't enough. Jesus said that repeatedly to the Pharisees. The Pharisees followed the rules, but their hearts weren't right. Um, and that's what um, Paul is trying to tell these people now. Your hearts being right with God is what's important. Whether or not you're circumcised doesn't really matter. Um, and so by turning here, uh, by turning away from that faith, uh, they, the Galatians, the people in Galatia, were trading liberty for chains. Um, they were giving up... Um, that peace that comes through grace, through Christ, um, because they were like, okay, cool, we have that, but we're still going to try to make it on our own. We're still going to try to do everything um, based off of who we are, not who Christ is. And what that does is that opens the door to a lot of, uh, a lot of anxiety. It opens the door to a lot of fear because there are things that we can't do. Um, and because of that, um, when we struggle and don't know what to do, it can cause fear. Where having faith in Christ and trusting him, um, he can do it. And so even in those hard times, um, we can be content because of Christ and the work that he's done in our lives. And these people in Galatia were willfully turning away from that and trying to take on the burden by themselves. Um, and that doesn't work. Um, and um, you see in verse 7, where uh, he says, Not that there is another one, talking about the gospel, but there are some who trouble you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. The word for trouble there is used a couple of other places in Scripture. It's used when the disciples are on the boat and Jesus is asleep and there's this big storm and they're all panicking and freaking out, going, we're going to die, uh, because they don't have control over the situation. And it's used uh, to describe how King Herod felt when he heard about Jesus being born, a new king being born. He's worried. He's anxious. He's going, is someone going to come take my throne? The disciples are saying, are we going to drown? What's going on? Because they had no control over the situation. Um, and, and by coming in and stirring up trouble, these uh, false teachers were putting that anxiety, that fear, back on um, these new believers, these new Christians. Um, and the, by following them, these new Christians were putting it on themselves. Again, this anxiety, this fear that they didn't have the power to deal with by themselves. Um, and uh, then you move on. Um, one of the things that's kind of interesting to me um, as Paul says, you know, whether I, whether it's us or an angel from heaven that teaches a different gospel, anything other than you are saved by your faith through Christ, um, let them be accursed. Um, there actually are a couple, there are a lot of religions that claim um, to have had revelation from angels that have come around since Christianity. Um, Islam and Mormonism are two major religions in the world that claim to have been told by an angel, hey, here's more stuff that God says. But when you look at what they say, it doesn't line up with God's word. It doesn't line up with the Bible. So how can it be something that God's saying if it doesn't line up with God's word, with the Bible? Simple answer is it's not. It doesn't line up. Um, that is a false teaching that has led people astray. Uh, 
Okay. Um, it also says, when he says, let these people that are teaching these false gospels be accursed, um, kind of a cool word, um, means anathema. Um, that's the word that was used in the Bible. And basically it means to be set apart for destruction. So the original way that that kind of word would have been used would have actually been um, to set aside a sacrifice. Um, so to set aside a sacrifice a, is supposed to be like burned up is a sacrifice. Um, and the way that it came to be used in the early church was basically to excommunicate. So if, if the church named somebody anathema, it meant that you're not allowed back in the church um, until you fix what's wrong. Um, so you would see that with people who taught really, really messed up false doctrines. The church would declare them as uh, anathema, and they would excommunicate them. Um, and so that's kind of what Paul is saying here, saying, you know, this person should be set apart for destruction. Um, they should not be allowed to um, lead Christians astray by coming and speaking and teaching at the church, because what they're teaching isn't right. It's not accurate. It's not what God says. Um, and, you know, you look at that and you go, okay, but that's a long time ago, circumcision, all that. How does that apply to us today? Like, that doesn't make sense, right? We don't do that anyway, um, not from a spiritual standpoint. Um, so how does that apply to us today? Well, there are still false gospels that are taught today. Um, and I'm just going to share a few with you right now. Um, one that's very popular is that all roads lead to heaven. What this says is it doesn't matter what religion you follow, what you believe, who you believe in. Basically, as long as you follow your religion and you're a good person, then you're going to go to heaven. Um, that's what that teaches. But what the Bible says, what God's word says um, in John 14, verse 6, um, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is saying right there, salvation is through him and him alone. That's God's word. Okay. Well, what about another one? Works-based salvation. You know, if you do enough good things, uh, then, God, then God's going to reward you in the end for being a good person. Um, if your good outweighs your bad, cool. And actually, that's a big part of Islam. A big part of the Muslim religion is basically, did I do more good than bad? And in the Islamic religion, if you asked a Muslim, they would tell you, I don't know if I'm going to go to heaven or not until I die. I find out when I die if I did enough good. That's a pretty scary way to live, right? Um, but that's one example. And then there are a lot of people who would just say, I, I'm a good person. I do a lot of good things. That's enough to get me into heaven, right? That the truth is, is no. Um, no, what God's word says in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 is this. Um, sorry. Yeah, it says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of your own doing. It is a gift. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. Okay, so the Bible says salvation is through faith in Christ, not because of what we do. That way we can't brag. We can't go, oh, I'm saved because I'm so good. Because the fact is, Jesus is good, and the belief in Jesus is what saves us. It's not our, not our doing. Okay? Uh, let's do one more. Uh, and that's prosperity gospel. And this one's probably the one that is most prevalent in the Christian church. There are people that will teach that if you pray hard enough and do um, enough good things and are faithful enough, that God's going to give you everything you ever ask him for. He's going to give you money. He's going to give you cars. He's going to give you a big mansion with, with an elevator in it. He's going to give you private airplanes, all sorts of wild things. And a couple of scriptures... Uh, but there's a lot of scriptures that you can pull from to, uh, to show that that's not what God says. Um, 
but I'm only, I'm only going to share two. Um, John 15, 18, Jesus says, If the world hates you, remember that it hated me first. Okay? Jesus was God himself on earth, and things were not easy for him. He was beaten, he was disliked, he was crucified on a cross. Okay? And then uh, Matthew 8, 20, Jesus says, Foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Okay? So Jesus said, you know, I don't have a house, I don't have this, I don't have that. And again, that's Jesus. That is God on earth in human flesh. And he didn't have all the fancy physical things that, that we say um, are signs of success. And that some of these prosperity teachers would say that if you don't have these, that means your faith is messed up. I'm pretty sure Jesus' faith didn't mess up. Jesus is God. He had a relationship with God like no other because he was God. He is God today still. Um, and so... I'm going to trust what Jesus says over these false teachings, okay? Uh, I want to encourage you to do the same. Okay, so uh, when we look at this, what do we do? What do we do in these situations when, uh, you know, someone might be saying something that we don't, don't know if it's true or not, but it doesn't sound right? Um, what do we do? Uh, First and foremost, we hold fast to the gospel. We hold fast to the truth of who Jesus is, what Jesus did on the cross for us, and our faith in him. That's our first thing. We hold fast to that. Um, second, check it against scripture. Whatever someone says, look at it in the Bible. See if it's true. See if the Bible backs up what they're saying. And I don't mean just one verse. Because anyone can make one verse say what they want it to say. Kelsey and I, uh, when we were engaged, we were in Walmart and Tyler. And we had a couple come up to us, and they were members of a cult. And they started teaching that there was a, a God in heaven that they called the Queen Mother in heaven. So basically they were saying that there was... It wasn't a trinity, there was a fourth part of the trinity is basically what they were saying. They were saying that there was father, son, spirit, mom. And, uh, and they were taking scripture, but they were taking individual verses and not reading it in the context of the entire passage. Where when you read it in the context of the passage, it was actually talking about like the earth or people. Like, it was not talking about a separate part of the Godhead. It wasn't talking about God the Father, God the, the Son, God the Spirit, God the Mother, because God the Mother isn't there. There's, the Trinity is three. It's not four, because that wouldn't be Trinity. Three is Trinity. And that's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible teaches is the, is the Trinity. Um, so check things against Scripture. Um, and uh, listen to the Holy Spirit. Um, one of the things that uh, I'm sure disappointed Paul here is that these people were so easily swayed by these arguments from these false teachers, and they didn't even wait or ask the Holy Spirit to, uh, to tell them what's true. Jesus said that the Holy Spirit's our advocate and that it's our guide. And so we want to listen to the Holy Spirit when we're not sure if something's right or wrong or, or true or false. We want to listen to the Holy Spirit and, uh, and let the Holy Spirit guide us and use the Scripture. The Scripture is the Word of God, and the Holy Spirit works through that to teach us. Uh, and then if you do all that and you're still not sure, uh, you know, seek the advice of a spiritual mentor you trust. You know, that could be me, that could be Corey, that could be Kelsey, um, that could be your mom or your dad, or somebody that you know and trust that you know, hey, th that person is not going to teach me something like way out there that's way wrong. Um, you know, um, 
check with us. We may not know the answers. We may not know the answers right away, but we will definitely help you find those answers. Okay? Um, so those are the things that I want to encourage. And then, you know, do what Paul does. Uh, when you look at uh, verse, the last verse in there, verse 10, um, Paul talks about that um, he's not there to please man. He's there to please God. Um, so he was talking about, you know, he was teaching them the truth that God told him to teach them. He wasn't trying to please all these different groups of people. He wasn't trying to please the Jews. He wasn't trying to please the Gentiles. He was trying to please God. Okay? And so don't just go along with what somebody says is right. Um, if it doesn't line up with what the, the Scripture says, with what the Bible says, because you don't want to upset them and you want to just go along and not, um, not stand out or be different. Okay? Do what would please God. That should be our, our goal every day, is we want to, to please God. And we please God by trusting Him, trusting His Word, and uh, trusting that what He's revealed to us here in this is true. Okay? Um, that's my encouragement for y'all this week. Um, I love y'all. Really can't wait to get to see y'all in person again. Um, I'm getting tired of not getting to see y'all. Uh, but love y'all. See y'all soon. Bye.